Hey everybody, it's Al. I'm back again. Uh, I wanted to pick up this uh, crank shaft project that we're working on here. And um, I'm going to pick up in version 25. I know a lot of you participating in the thread are running version 25. And I don't want you to be under the impression that you need to have 26 to program this part because you don't. You can do it in 25. And uh, just to kind of recap, at this point, we've set up our two um, index systems and we've roughed the part out. Uh, there are a couple of different ways that we could have roughed this out. And I know there's questions about stock for finish and uh, how that's going to affect, um, you know, when we come in and we start getting into these rotary paths, which I, which I will address. But to kind of begin with, um, now that we understand our base point uh, and how to utilize that uh, a little better, you know, what I want to talk about now is uh, how to generate some of the measurements that we need to figure out our start and stop cutting and then also uh, where our base point will be in relation to um, our uh, setup location. So I, I need to create uh, some dimensions. So what I'm going to do, uh, let me create another layer here. What I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to just sketch a I'm going to sketch a, a rectangle on the screen here, and then I'm going to generate a planar uh, surface here. For those of you that uh, watch my videos, I'm sure you've seen me do this a couple of times, but uh, I'm going to generate the intersection curves of this surface in this model. And the reason why I do that is to give me the wireframe, and what I'll be able to do is use that uh, wireframe to uh, generate um, the uh, dimensions that I need. I also want to uh, extract edges from this surface here too because uh, I'm going to use uh, the center of that as my base point location when I get into machining that lobe. Now um, one of the other things to talk about as well is uh, when you're when you're machining this part you know uh, it's likely that you you probably have a mill and a lathe in the shop and uh, you may turn down uh, these posts here to hold it in your fixture or what have you so you know you do have milling and turning available to you within Bobcat and you know we can use this wireframe geometry to turn down this profile and then flip the part over and turn it down again so uh, maybe in another video I'll get into that but um, for now I just want to talk about picking up some dimensions uh, there are some critical dimensions that I do need and um, so let's go ahead and create some of those uh, the start and stop is based on your machine uh, setup and my machine setup is located on center here so all of my dimensional positions for my start and stop will be based off of that uh, I'm gonna come into here and uh, dimension horizontal and I want to know the distance from here to here, which I get uh, one inch from here to here, which I get uh, 1.5 from here to here, which I get three, and from here to here, which I get uh, 3.5, and um, from here to there which I get 4.5. So these are all the dimensions that I need for my start and stop. The other dimension that I need is um, the Y value to the center of this. So I'm just gonna, uh, let's, let's see, dimension vertical, let's see if we can grab it from here to here. And that gives me that dimension there. Okay, I'm getting the, just in case if you're wondering, I'm holding shift and left clicking and that gives me the, the points that I need. Now, let's go ahead and create a new setup. And I'm just separating this setup from the other index systems because uh, I don't want them to uh, have any, uh, play a role or have a, a factor on um, where we're, uh, where we're getting, uh, uh, where our base point is located. So I'm going to load in a new setup. From here, I'm going to load our rotary axis or rotary tool path. Uh, define my cutter. Uh, let's just adjust this around. Um, set our 
tolerance and I'll go ahead and compute this and again um, you can see here because the center of our toolpath is based on our uh, setup which is right here uh, as we get to the um, as we get to the other section of the model we are uh, having a toolpath that really we can't use it's, it's not cutting around on the other side so we need to use our start start and stop like we've talked about in the past so we're gonna come in here and edit this so our start will make it zero we know that this is one inch um, from here to our uh, counterweight so what we're gonna do is we want to back it off that so we'll take one inch minus half the tool and that will keep that away and then we'll go ahead and compute and now we can see we're getting our toolpath on that section so now we want to do the next section here so we'll just go ahead and uh, load another strategy select our uh, geometry um, from here we're gonna do around uh, our base point we need to set our adjustment in our base point and that's the distance from the center of this circle to the center of this circle and that's 2.5 which we've measured so we'll put that in our base point for y 2.5 um, let's see here this is fine this is fine alright so now we want to set our start so our start is gonna be uh, this is 1.5 so we'll make that 1.75 and then our end is going to be uh, this is three, so we'll make it uh, 2.75, and then we'll go ahead and compute, and that will put the next group there, and then now we just have to do the last one. So we'll do uh, insert rotary, select all, spacebar, next. We have our tool. Uh, this is going to be a round base point is zero uh, parameters uh, start is going to be this is 3.5 so 3.5 uh, uh, 3.75 and this one here is gonna be 4.5 all right there we go and compute and then now we have our next section so um, again just by utilizing the base point and uh, making some simple measurements we're able to use the rotary tool path uh, to cut uh, all these sections so now uh, let's throw up our simulator uh, let me grab a different machine uh, part current settings let's go to the Herco and then load this up. All right, that looks good. So we'll just kind of get in here and bring our tailstock up a little closer. Blank this out. Run this through the first routine. go to the next operation mm. uh, you know what let me go ahead and get rid of this here uh, when I added the new setup I didn't change its location I think I did um, minus seven so I need to make sure this setup matches that minus seven Okay, okay. Let's run that through again. All right. So we're going to turn off our tool path here, run through the first operation, run through the second operation, and now we're going to get into our rotary tool path. I, I think I may need to make an adjustment on my uh, tool size there, but let's see how this handles. Yeah. It's definitely not uh, hanging out long enough there. So let me go back and uh, change that real quick. So I'll stop this. 
Um, we'll come back in, and we're just going to make this 5 and 5. Alright, let's try this one last time, and we should be good to go. Okay, turn this off, turn that off. Updated. Let me uh, recompute. Five and five. Compute. Five and five. We'll compute it. We should be good now. Next operation. Next operation. Uh, run this through. There we go. Now, what the, what one of the questions is that I, I'm definitely going to need to address is when we rough this out, we left twenty thou on the wall uh, for finishing, and. Um, the uh, the problem with that is how when the tool comes down into the part, it's really rapiding right down into the stock, and uh, how to how to adjust that, uh, which we'll talk about uh, in another video. But uh, man, that tool really needs to hang out pretty long to uh, to get all the way around that. But you know, this should be uh, this should, hopefully following along in the thread. This should help us all get to the point where. Uh, we understand how to cut off center, how to use our base point, and how to rough these parts. And uh, uh, two and um, uh, three axis, and you know exactly what we can see here. We see red on uh, the tools coming right up to that sidewall there, and rubbing right up against it. So uh, we'll address that in the next video. But hopefully. Uh, uh, we've all learned a lot. If there's any questions, reply back to the thread uh, or on the Facebook or YouTube page and uh, look forward to picking it up in the next video. Thanks, guys.